So first of all, congratulations on the success of the show as well as this being the final season. Thank Thanks. you. It was all us. Yeah, yeah, we did it. We, yeah. Yeah. We're the invisible puppet masters holding this whole thing together. <laughs> That Which is why we're in the final season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the only reason we made it. So DB okay. stands for Dempsey Basil. Basil's my surname, my middle name. Dempsey Basil Vice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What can you tell us about your character's journey in season eight now? Not a lot. Yeah, yeah. nothing <laughs> really. Pop I mean, I, I think with uh, with Gendry, he's been on a, a sort of fairly constant voyage of discovery uh, about himself and who he is and his place within the world. Um, and I think he's always, I guess he's always felt like this this innate feeling that he, he wanted to be, always destined to be involved in something bigger than this sort of very sheltered existence he was le leading in Flea Bottom in the slums as an armorer. And I think you, you saw at the end of season seven with, with you know, he, he immediately signed up for that bonkers expedition beyond the wall. and. Um, but I think his eyes have now really been opened up to the to the impending threat, and and I think so. It's the beginning of season eight is, as I think, for Gendry, him sort of preparing himself for that reckoning that he feels like he wants to be a part of. But I'm not sure. You know, I think he's just as terrified as everybody else. What about you, Jacob? Uh, I I think for Grey Worm in season eight, it's it's about like adapting to new to a new environment and to to new people. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of, I think that's, okay. that's a, yeah. <laughs> You've you worked on six seasons now, so how would you say your character has evolved? I, I think Grey Worm's more of a human being now. <laughs> I think it's taken quite a long time. I think he starts off, when, when you first see him in the story, he's just like this like robot. I, I think Dan Weiss said to me, like my first few, I think before we started shooting actually, he was like, you just have to think of Grey Worm as like, he's like walking trauma. He's just, he's been traumatized from like birth, basically. So all he's ever known is what he's been like conditioned to know. Um, and he's like, now imagine that that he gets introduced to freedom. Like, what does that look like? How? And that's kind of, I think that's kind of been his story is like, how do you turn like artificial intelligence into human intelligence with emotion? And, and I think he's like found his way into that through Missande and Daenerys. How did you tackle that challenge? It's been it's been quite hard because because I guess every season there's we always have like we want to try and make it like go a little bit fur further with it like whether it be like telling jokes or or falling in love or like introducing sex into Missande and Grey Worm's relationship and and it's always like we always go like too far like I always go too far in terms of like. Like I start, no, oh, it's not no, no, Joe. I didn't say like, anything. yeah, but you're I'm, that face. Um, <laughs> um, like as in, I feel like in terms of getting angry or smiling or whatever, that stuff. I, we always go too far and then we bring it back, and it and it's like just incremental changes. I think that maybe other people won't notice, but that's just kidding. more about me being a, a not bad not actor than it is about. Not <laughs> Joey, your character's had most significance after his return last season. How's that transition been like for you? I think it's what I think, again, for, for Gendry, it's been kind of tricky. He's... Oh, tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been kind of tricky. Because, um, you know, I think he's, he's, as I said before, he's been constantly discovering new facets to his to his lineage. And, 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 that, and I think for someone who for much of his life has felt very alone in the world and therefore has lacked, uh, I guess, purpose and um, belonging. I think that it's, uh, he's constantly trying to work out what this new information means for him and, and his place within society and his place within, and, and, wh and where that means his life's gonna go. And I think that, so yeah, I mean, he's had his, he had his, a lot of, he's had a lot of time to think, hasn't he? Yeah. Seasons four to seven. <laughs> Um, but I think, but I think he's ready now. I think, I think you've seen. I think in the Gendry that you saw in season seven is, you know, he's he's a man now. And lastly, the show has a way of creating really epic death scenes. So if you could choose the way your character dies or his character dies, and vice versa, I'd rather do his. <laughs> <laughs> how would how would you have it go down? Um, 
How do I think Grey Worm should? I mean, I think I think you should. I mean, we should die laughing, shouldn't he? Then really, <laughs> one of his. Can you own, imagine if that was his, it? You know, he's just dis- <laughs> he's clearly just discovered how to crack jokes, and he's uh, makes himself die. It's like his programming he's, gets yeah. broken, and his head just goes. And he even he's laughing so hard, and he's saying, "I'm dying, I'm dying," and no one's taking him seriously. <laughs> And um, and then he's and then he's gone. <laughs> that's a good one. Actually, I've not had that all day, so that's great. <laughs> I was just I was just praying that I was praying that a stone just fell into the boat and and the boat sinks and Gendry just never comes back. That was sort of always my hope. Um, but but he came back and that was fine. Fine. It was great. Yeah. Thank you so much for the chat. <laughs> Wishing you. you all the best. <laughs>